Can you hear that? It's the rain. It's really raining outside. Here I am, sat on the couch. It's in the morning. It's raining hard and it's noisy on my plastic extension roof. Um, and all I can think about is Gibsons. Gibson, 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 Gibson. Now, I don't own a Gibson. I've never owned a Gibson. And the Gibsons that I have wanted to own are fairly few and far between. Um, however, now I always used to say that if I ever bought a Les Paul, I would buy a studio. Why? Because the studio, I think, was a genius idea. The studio arrived, I think, in 83. And there were various similarly conceptualized Les Paul models before that. There were things along those lines. And obviously, you always had the juniors and specials uh, that um, came, you know, quite early on. Although they tended to have P90 pickups rather than the humbuckers. But what the studio did was it kind of, the idea, the concept was like, okay, let's maintain the core structure of what makes a Les Paul a Les Paul. So mahogany body, mahogany neck, maple cap, two humbuckers you know, um, ABR1 bridge or Nashville or whatever, tailpiece, you know, the usual stuff, um, Grovers or whatever. And, um, but let's get rid of the stuff that costs extra to do. So body binding and neck binding and, um, you know, quilted, you know, double A, triple A, quadruple A, um, tops, you know, special finishes and, all that sort of thing. So get rid of the stuff that doesn't really have any impact on the sort of sonic signature of the instrument. And we can then make that instrument more affordable. Um, you know, and to this day, that is what a, a, a Les Paul studio is. Uh, you know, it's a USA made uh, guitar that kind of um, foregoes those uh, aforementioned bells and whistles. And you know, it comes in a good, you know, thousand pounds, uh, dollars cheaper or more than the sort of standard uh, Les Paul, which in itself is these days not the pinnacle uh, or the, uh, you know, well, don't get me started on why we, why we need sort of, you know, 20,000 pound Murphy Lab fucking Les Paul uh, reissues. Blech. I saw you coming. dot com. Uh, that's what it's all about these days, and you know it's true. Um, but let's not go down that rabbit hole because uh, we can talk for hours about that. Um, however, the studio is where it's at for me. It always has been. However, when faced with the actual prospect of choosing a Les Paul to buy um, especially one on a budget and probably second hand I find myself uh, looking at the studios and uh, excuse me um, and being less than satisfied unless I can find one in a cool colour so the, the other thing with studios is that they often tend to be very basic flat colours. You know, you'll get a lot of black studios, you get a lot of wine red studios, you get a lot, you know, more recent years you've had all those sort of faded, I don't like those. Um, you know, and every now and again you'll find a Pelham blue one, you know, and it's like, ooh, you know, or a TV yellow or something like that, which is kind of, you know, the TV yellow tends to be the sort of, the specials and juniors tend to come in TV yellow. You don't get so many... Um, you know, uh, more up the range uh, models in that in that color, whereas I think it looks pretty pretty.
pretty dang cool on the studio. Um, you know, uh, sometimes you'll get a, like an Arctic white studio. I think they look very cool. I mean, they're very 70s looking, but they look really cool. I like, I like those. Um, so, um, right. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And, um, and I'm like, oh, you know, just find the studio, Ben, you know, find the LP studio, have a look at those, keep looking at those, something will come up in Pelham Blue, maybe, if you're lucky. You know, now, the problem with the Pelham Blue, um, these days especially, you get a lot of models coming out these days, and they're only blue on the cap on the front and then the back of the guitar is you know your sort of stained sort of wood finish you know mahogany um yeah brown uh black or something <sighs> nah you want that color everywhere man you know you go look at the um there's a les paul thing called a les paul modern light or something like that i think it's called that it's like a thinner there's it's a bit like the old the paul if you know if you remember those those had a thinner body as well with a belly carve um so it's a les paul modern light i think it's called and they come in sort of various sort of colors and there's one color that looks a little bit like pelham blue but it isn't it's actually a, a some kind of greeny color but um but the, the nice thing about those models uh, is that, the, you know, they're, they're that colour all over. You know, front, back, neck, headstock. Um, so if you like the colour, I, I like the colour to be everywhere. I don't really want, you know, if I want, a, if I, if I buy a Pelham Blue Les Paul, I want the fucking thing to be Pelham Blue front and back. And the headstock. I don't want it to be just on the front. Anyway, um, <sighs> anyway, <coughs> of course, what happens? Um, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And I'm thinking, I, I want, you know, I'm just going to see what they're doing over on the Epiphone side of things. Now, if you don't know much about Epiphone, Epiphone is a wholly owned brand uh, by of, of Gibson, but it was a brand in its own right for many, many years, and uh, in fact, a competitor of Gibson's uh, for many years. And Gibson retains the right to uh, manufacture... Um, legacy epiphone models you know so that's the kind of sheratons and casinos and kind of all those kinds of things uh, which they do um but epiphone is also represents gibson's uh um affordable arm you know in terms of they're made in the far east usually and uh and they represent the sort of lower end uh, uh price scale and so you will get um a range of gibson designs gibson models there's paul's sgs that kind of thing with epiphone branding and they are um you know uh more cost conscious more uh you know um economically attainable models um but some of them have some very nice features, you know, and so, but it's not a Gibson, right? And you, and, and again, you see these things advertised, it's like, uh, you know, Epiphone by Gibson. It's the same thing as the Squire thing, you know, it's like Fender. It's not a Fender, it's a Squire. But anyway, um, nothing wrong with a Squire, but there you go. So Epiphone, you know, like if I was going to buy a casino or a Sheraton or something like that, yeah, that's cool. I don't want... I don't really want a Les Paul that says Epiphone on it. You know, because this isn't really a thing. Or it, sh it shouldn't be a thing. It's only a thing because Gibson 
you know, have that ability to put the Epiphone name on a, you know, licensed Les Paul. Gibson don't make that. Uh... What's the cat doing? The cat is acting very strangely over there. Um. Anyway. <laughs> um. But. But. I did find something interesting over in the old epiphone section and that is the uh, the white Les Paul Jerry Cantrell uh, model with the uh, Fishman pickups and uh, all that stuff um, that's a pretty cool guitar right there. It's ebony board and Arctic white. Fishman Fluence. Um, three phase pickups and locking tuners. And, you know, it's a nicely specced instrument. Good looking instrument. Good sounding instrument. Great instrument. Comes with a case. Yeah, it looks pretty fucking cool. But it's an Epiphone. Again, I'm not knocking Epiphone. I love Epiphone. But, you know, Epiphone shouldn't be making those pulls, in my opinion. Just It doesn't sit well with me. I want, if I, you know, I want Epiphone casinos and Epiphone Sheratons and Epiphone, you know, the legacy stuff. Um, anyway, so there is my uh, dilemma, and it's not really a dilemma at all because you know I'm not really. Uh, I shouldn't really be looking at guitars, but I just do because I'm a guitar player, and everyone does that. We all do that, you know. We just look at guitars and. Yeah buy them <laughs> um cat is being really weird i wish i could show you that but i can't switch the thing around um while i'm recording what what oh okay just come back up what do you want you all right with this collar on yeah okay put a new co flea collar on her tonight and i'm not sure she hasn't had one for a couple of weeks, and I think she's not really used to it. Anyway, so, there we are. Uh, the Les Paul Studio. Les Paul Studio is where it's at for me. But I don't want a black one, or a wine red one, or a faded wine red one, or a burst, or any you know, of any kind. Not that they don't need burst, but you know, I, I don't want that stuff. Um... I want it to be in a cool colour. I'll tell you what I did see today. So tempting. So tempting. I really want one, but I, I don't need one. And I don't need one, and I don't have any use for one. And I think they're overpriced, but I still want one. And I, I saw one today for sale. Um, and that's one of those pink uh, Hello Kitty Squire Stratocasters. The single pickup. With the Hello Kitty pick guard. I love those. I I, <laughs> I love those. And I would I would have one in a heartbeat if if I could pick it up for a couple hundred quid, but they they are they are commanding some money these days and I saw one today and it was about six, seven hundred pounds. And that's a lot of money for a single pickup squire, even if it is the coolest single pickup squire. <laughs> You can keep your Tom DeLonghi single pickup Strat Squire stuff. It's the pink Hello Kitty is where it's at. Let me tell you. Anyway, so where was I? Oh yeah, um, yeah. I do want a Gibson. You know. I've never had one. And uh, 
so I would like to, you know, break my Gibson duck, so to speak. It's got to be the right one. Watchers of my channel, um, and I'm aware that I've been waffling on for 15 minutes, but watchers of my channel will be aware that um, I have a case. I have a, a, a 2017 high performance Les Paul case, the, the streamlined chrome jetliner type case, which is so heavy. I mean, it's the most ridiculous case in the world. It's great. It's the fan most. I mean, that case is that case is it's just joy in a thing, but it's so heavy. Like even without a guitar in it, it's ridiculously heavy. You put a guitar in it, especially if it's going to be a Les Paul, and it might weigh nine pounds or ten pounds. Um, it's a ridiculous prospect to carry anywhere. Um, I took that case to show um, my mate Ray a few weeks ago. Um, I went. Over, we, we get together every now and again, me and Ray, and um, just chat about guitars and you know, uh, whatever. And um, I had borrowed his um, sire, uh, Larry Carlton, um, sort of Les Paul, P90 type Les Paul thing. And it was a really nice guitar on a sort of sale or return uh, thing. And um, I couldn't buy it, but I, um, but it was a really nice guitar. And I, and I eventually returned it to him. We had, a, we had an evening and a, a chat over a cup of coffees and, uh, you know, and uh, I brought the case. Well, I brought the sire in that case to uh, to, to keep it safe in the car because um, it, it fits in the Les Paul um, like high performance case. But I said to him, "You feel how heavy this case is? <laughs> it is ridiculous. It is ridiculously heavy. I mean, you would never want to carry one of those to a gig. You know, it's a very strange thing, but it is a." thing of beauty in in, in in and of itself it's a thing of beauty um the latches are like something out of a james bond movie the way they work you know there's these beautiful over-engineered you know heavy latches that just sort of lift up and push and they kind of the whole thing is just it's awesome it's awesome but it weighs a ton and i haven't got a guitar to put in it and the trouble is, if I buy, you know, if I buy a Les Paul studio or something like that, it might well come in a decent case already. You know, a lot of them that I see for sale do. So what do you do? Do you put, keep it in the case that it's already in? Or do you put it in the high performance streamliner case? Streamliner? Jetliner. Airliner? Air. Stream. That's it. Airstream, like those trailers we see in movies. It's like that, but a case. 18 and a half minutes, folks. Sorry. Right, I'm going. Bye-bye. Um, tune in next week uh, when I will be waffling on about probably the same thing.